Good morning or good afternoon, whatever the case may be, in whatever time zone you are in. My name is Vince Garcia, and I am the Marketing Manager with IP Datatel in Houston, Texas. I want to thank everybody out there in our audience for joining us today. Uh, today's presentation, IP Datatel presents Helix Deep Dive, Up Close and Personal with Evolved Security. All right. I'd like to talk to you first about today's presenter, Scott Plunkett. Scott joined IP Datatel in January as our company's product manager, and Scott has over 20 years of experience in product management with over 10 of those years in network security and premise security systems and architectures. Scott is focused on working with our dealer partners to develop best-in-class dealer value, all while delivering top-tier user experiences. Scott, welcome to the program. Thank you, Vince. I'm happy to be here and happy to talk to you guys about the about the, the Helix. So, um, what we're going to do today is we're going to cover all this all these topics. Um, yep. We're going to talk about simple ins installation and, and remote access on the go and some of those things. But um, as we go through some of them, we're going to take a little bit deeper dive, right? That's, yes. what, that's what this that's, this is about this week. Um, and um, the, I also kind of uh, I'm a little, little excited because I also have the uh, I get to do an announcement. So we, we've got a couple of, couple of exciting things, and I look forward to doing the seminar. Awesome! Looking forward to this uh, secure smart helix wireless security and automation system. We are going to get into a deep dive, folks. Here we go. Scott, you want to talk to our uh, our participants today about secure smart helix benefits? Let's start at the top. Absolutely. So the, the first thing, and, and probably um, for, for me anyway, one of the most important things about the Helix is um, its simplicity, right? This is a, an incredibly easy to install um, uh, panel, and you can install it in, in a pretty wide variety of, of situations, right? It's, it's um, great for takeovers. It's incredibly future-proof because it's a completely modular design. Okay. Um, it's it's uh, the, probably the most flexible panel on the market. Um, you've got incredible wireless sensors to go along with it, um, and, it and it's incredibly cost effective. Um, this, this panel is um, where it fits in the price point. I don't know anybody who can't put this in their portfolio. Fantastic. So this is a lot of great benefits for our dealer participants out there to consider. All right, Scott, can you take us through uh, the Helix Roadmap Overview, some of the things that we've already accomplished and where we're going to be in the near future? Sure. So uh, anybody who attended the, the previous Helix webinar uh, might have, might have uh, seen some of these, these things. And one of the things that we've been uh, working on is getting better about delivering on software. And so in Q3, we made the promise that we were going to deliver uh, Z-Wave device control. We did. And, and, and absolutely did that, right? We delivered on that promise. Um, so in Q4, what we've got coming up next um, is the more complex versions of Z-Wave, um, things like scenes. That's where you can take more, more than one uh, Z-Wave device and group it together and, and with one touch of a button um, activate all those devices. Okay. Um, and then beyond that um, is what, what I refer to as real automation. It's, it is scenes and or controls that are, that are defined and driven um, by macros or driven by um, filters and things like that. Th that to me is when it gets really excited and, and that's coming in Q4. So, um, we have a, a lot of great work, and um, now that we've got kind of the, the software teams are, are geared up and really cranking out the software, um, I, I think you'll, you'll see those, those features come fast and furious. Fantastic. Looking forward to that. Uh, let's talk a little bit about our connected home solution. Yeah, so you'll see it here in Q3, we talked about um, delivering Z-Wave device control. So, right. uh, so from the Secure Smart uh, software today, you can control uh, lights and locks and garage doors and thermostats. Um, those are all Z-Wave devices. Um, we talked uh, just a moment ago about uh, scenes and automation, how we're going to work on that in Q4. But then what's, what's beyond that, right? Um, right. What's, what's going to be next to come for our connected home solutions? And, and uh, that's going to be uh, reaching out and connecting with all of the other um, API level integrations. The integrations with um, things like uh, Nest and Ift and, and Amazon Echo. We're really excited about what that's going to mean for the platform. Um, and what it, what it means to the, the experience that we deliver to um, our, our end users. Okay, so that's some things that we can look forward to in 2018. Uh, Scott, let's talk about what future-proof communications means with the Helix system. Sure, so um, obviously this is a, this is a uh, IP first, right? We, we are, we are all, all about the Ethernet port here, yes. here, here at IP Data Tell. 
but um, it's more than that, right? Because we, we always keep an eye on, um, on, on the ball with respect to what are we going to do going forward. Um, with the Helix device, um, you're future-proofed in a couple of ways. The first is that it's modular, right? And, and that means that I can swap cards in and out. So if today's technology is CDMA, great. I can put in a CDMA card and have dual paths. Um, same with the Z-Wave module, right? I can add that Z-Wave module, and I've got Z-Wave functionality. If for some reason, some way, Z-Wave becomes, you know, falls out of favor and, you know, mesh Bluetooth or something else becomes the, 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 the wave of the future, mm -hmm. well, you don't have to go reinvest in this hardware. You simply pop out a card, pop in a new one, and that modular design means that um, you're future-proof. You, you can um, utilize this panel going forward. Okay, fantastic. A lot of interesting things to consider with future-proof communications. Now, you mentioned LTE. Let's talk about the LTE for Helix. Yeah, so this, this is where I get excited because I get to actually announce something. Yes. That, that doesn't happen very often, um, but um, so this, this is probably the first time that this has kind of been widely publicly broadcast, and we now have an LTE solution for the Helix panel. Um, and it's pretty exciting. One of the things that we found as we were developing our offering um, on the communicator side of the house um, was that um, a, a lot of uh, other competitor companies, they either um, weren't delivering um, uh, real LTE devices, they were kind of pseudo LTE, okay. um, or they were delivering a device that, that um, didn't have uh, multiple antennas, so um, it was LTE, but it was kind of dumbed down, right? They didn't have the diversified antenna, didn't have that, that experience of being able to have great coverage with an LTE solution. Okay. Um, so the Helix follows on, on all of that research and all of the work that we did on that, and this utilizes the same thing. We, there's actually two antennas in here. Okay. Uh, so uh, if you look at the, the graphic that we have here, you can see on the top, um, and it's, in the center is a, is a picture of the card with just one of the antennas attached. Okay. Um, but if you see on that left-hand graphic um, at the top, you can see there's one antenna that's kind of pulled up, up out there. It actually mounts where that red tape is there. And then the other antenna rolls down to the side and mounts in the same position that the old CDMA antenna did. Okay. Um, on the card, we've got um, kind of the cellular indicators. We call those the link indicators. They tell you, um, are you connected to the cellular network? Are you connected to the, the back end central station? Um, you, so you, there's real information being delivered from those LEDs. And then obviously you've got your signal bars. Okay. So we're incredibly excited to roll out LTE for the, for the, for the Helix. It's something that at, from the, from the uh, very first time that we talked about the, the Helix solution and we were at the same time talking about the, the LTE communicators, people were asking about it. So here it is. It's out. Um, so uh, we, we're effectively um, replacing the CDMA solution with the, with the LTE solution. All right. And fantastic. Your first product announcement, right? Hallelujah. <laughs> Great. Uh, okay. Let's talk about alarm signaling notifications and controls as they relate to our Helix. Sure. So obviously we're dual path. We just, we just talked, spent some time talking about that. But um, one of the great things about the Helix is this is an always-on system, and, and it gives you um, kind of that, that instant responsiveness that people are looking for from their apps. So um, either, um, at, either regardless of whether it's kind of talking about home control or talking about the, the, the alarm system. Um, but we also have a really advanced network supervision. So all of these transactions, all of the uh, communication between the Helix mm -hmm. and our network cloud and the central stations, all of that's monitored. We, we know within minutes if, if there's a problem with, with that device. Um, and obviously we can deliver notifications around that. And that all, all of that infrastructure um, enables our smart devices and our secure smart app. Okay, great. Now this slide is a little bit of a, re a review from our last presentation, but let's talk a little bit about accessories and sensors for Helix. Yeah, so one of the incredible things about the, about the Helix platform is the, the wide variety of sensors that you've got for it um, and the ways that each of those sensors communicate with the panel. Um, so if you've got sensors that are things like um, a, a PIR, an infrared um, sensor, mm -hmm. or a, the um, a smoke or CO detection, or you know, a, a tilt sensor, a water sensor, temperature sensors, um, in your typical window door sensors, all of those communicate with the Helix over the what we call the Cryptics network. Mm -hmm. um, that's, um, w w I think I've got a good slide in here, a, a couple of slides later, um, that, that really kind of breaks out all the antennas. But those are all at the 433 megahertz part of the spectrum. Okay. And um, they're there for a reason, right? That we're using that part of the spectrum for a reason, and that's because when you're down at 433 megahertz range, um, that does a really good job penetrating through, you know, windows and doors and walls. The wall. It's a nice, long uh, uh, spectrum. Okay. So um, there's that, but then the, 
uh, it's also broken out, right? Because we've also got um, devices talking to the Bluetooth radios and even to the Wi-Fi radios in the device. Mm -hmm. So each function was, was separated out. That's a part of the architecture of, of the Helix. And, and that's something that a lot of people don't realize. So um, we're, we're, in a, we're having a deep dive conversation, so I think it's important to kind of to break out a little bit. You know, the, the keypads um, are talking to the Bluetooth radios. Okay. Um, and the um, HeliTouch, the seven-inch touchscreen device, that's talking to the Wi-Fi radio. Okay. And that's that design is is on purpose, it's so that those things all stay out of each other's way. Um, if if I've got a lot of activity happening on a keypad or on a HeliTouch, um, there's no, there's no crosstalk with that traffic with the sensors that that are, that are happening. So it's all by design. Fantastic. A lot of thought went into this. Exactly. That's great. Uh, let's talk a little bit about Z-Wave qualified. Uh, automation devices for the Helix? Sure, so um, what we've done is we, obviously we've, we've just completed the, the capabilities to uh, control these devices, and so what we've done is we've put together a list of all of the different things that we've done a full testing regimen on, which means that we know these devices work and work well. Mm -hmm. um, so, so, sometimes you'll find that, um, you'll see this qualified list, that means that, you know, we've done testing, mm -hmm. and we found either that, that company's implementation of the protocol was a little a, a little wonky, or they didn't fully implement the protocol, and so we know that we'll work with them, but we have caveats, right? We'll say, um, you know, this piece of functionality works and works great, but because of the way the company implemented something, we, we don't have this additional set of functionality. Okay. Um, and and that's that's true for for especially for for the more complex devices, things like door locks and thermostats. Um, I, I think thermostats is probably the place where we find that. Uh, the most uh, really, really high level of, of complexity. You'll see that of, of, of 12 that were qualified, only only six or would be ones that we would say all the functions work and they work well with, with, with our system. Okay. And it's not a vagary of our system. It's just a, it's, it's a artifact of, of the um, fact that Z-Wave over time has evolved as a platform and you've got lots of different versions of it out there. Okay, great. Thanks for explaining that and breaking it down for us. Uh, let's talk about the variety of expansion cards available for Helix right now. Yeah, again, the, the, the great thing about the, the Helix is its modular capabilities, right? And so um, the translator card uh, enables you to take with a single card and a, and a very low investment in terms of dollars and time, mm -hmm. uh, install a card into the Helix and take over other sensors that already exist in the space. So you're talking 2 gig, GE, NATCO, DSC, Honeywell, the full range of wireless sensors that exist, um, you can put a, a translator card in the Helix and take over those sensors. Mm -hmm. So that makes the Helix a great takeover play. Right? Um, there's also a Z-Wave card, and both the translator and the Z-Wave card, those live in, in uh, slot three, which I think I've got a, a graphic here in a minute that will show the, the various slots, but they live in slot three. So we also have, obviously, a Z-Wave card. That's for home automation, home control. Mm -hmm. um, we also have a third card that fits in that slot, and that's a, that's a combo. It's a translator card and a Z-Wave card, so you don't have to give up Z-Wave if, if you need translator functionality. Um, so there's three cards that live in that, in that, um, in that slot three. And then um, you'll see I've got LTE listed here. Right. Uh, that's because, you know what, we're, we really, when we look at it, um, CMA is the, the last generation technology. We're moving forward to, to, to LTE, and so LTE is going to be our offering going forward on the on the Helix. So if you if you want or need dual path, LTE is the way to go. And then in slot two, you can populate that with a Wi-Fi card. We have two different uh, flavors of the Wi-Fi card. Okay. Um, one of them is for just communicating with the HeliTouch device with our seven-inch touchscreen. Mm -hmm. um, the other one is if you want to have um, either tripath or you want your to replace your Ethernet cable with a Wi-Fi connection to your home network. Um, so there's two different cards there, and, and it's important that people understand that they do serve two different functionalities so that they don't, don't get the wrong one ordered. And as expansion cards, the dealers are able to customize this to fit their end users' needs, correct? Absolutely. That's, that's kind of the whole point here. The, between future-proofing and that, the customization, the whole idea is this is that don't spend more money than you have to, right? If, right. I, if, I'm gonna, if I have a customer and they want the whole shebang, they want everything, great. I can populate all those cards. I can give them a couple of hella touches. Um, they'll have Z-Wave. They'll have home controls. They'll have, they'll have the entire gambit. Uh, but if I have somebody who says, you know what, I just need a simple, simple security system, great. We've got that too. And it starts with the same base, the same hardware. But that person that, that says today, you know, all I can afford is that simple security system, 
they're tomorrow's whole home automation user, um, and they don't even know it yet because you can always go add the Z-Wave card and, and start adding Z-Wave devices. Right, you could start off very cost conscious and then Absolutely. upgrade through time. Absolutely. All right. Uh, now, this is, I think, one of the slides that you were talking about. Let's go over Helix architecture. Yeah, so I know that when, when we've had this, this slide and we've talked about the Helix before, um, it's, this is a, here's the Helix, and we kind of move on. Yeah. I want to actually kind of walk through some of this stuff yeah, and, and, let's do and, it. and dig in a little bit. So slot one, the, one, the slot that's on the far, furthest left, um, that is the slot that we use for extended communications. We talked about dual path. Mm -hmm. This is where the CDMA card or the GSM card, if you were, if you were in some place where you needed GSM, or in this case, um, with the case of the new card, the LTE card. Okay. That's where those live. Um, it's also where the Wi-Fi card would live if you were using Wi-Fi instead of Ethernet as your, as your backhaul to the, to the network, right? right. So you can put that in, all those in that, in that slot. Um, next to that is slot two. That's the Wi-Fi slot. Um, so if you wanted, you could put either the Wi-Fi card for backhaul there, or the Wi-Fi card for um, talking to the to the HelloTouch modules. Okay. So that's what we use slot two for, and we actually have lots of plans for slot two. So we have other things that we would like to do going forward. Um, so, and and that's part of this architecture, right? Is that we can do that. We can say, hey, you know what? I've got the the right bandwidth and the right connectivity there. I can go use that for other things later. Okay. Um, and then slot three is for Z-Wave and translator cards. Um, We've already talked about those some, so I'm not going to spend too much time on it. Uh, but then the other two things I want to point out here is in the top right, um, kind of off on its own, it's separated away, and those, those long antennas that come out of the top and, and run off to the side, Yes. those are the 433 megahertz um, antennas for the Cryptix receiver. Okay. So you've got the Cryptix receiver and radio up at the top. And then on, on the bottom, on the right, is where the Bluetooth radio is. Um, I've had a lot of people ask about the Bluetooth radio. It's there for a couple of reasons. Mm -hmm. One reason is for installation purposes. When I'm installing the Helix, I can use our HeliLink app. Um, currently works on iOS, but I can use the HeliLink app uh, to connect directly to the panel, and it will share, it will download all the, all the features of the panel. It will tell me these are all the zones that are installed, and I can literally walk through on the HeliLink app and make any modifications, configuration changes, things like that that I want to do. Um, but that uses a Bluetooth low energy um, signal so that as soon as I get a little bit further away, that signal will drop, right? And that's important because I don't want somebody to be able to do that remotely. I don't, I don't want somebody to sit outside with a, with, a, with a cell phone manipulating my system. Okay, so you're doing this on site. It, yeah, it's, it's for the installer, right? And, it, and it's, a, it's a piece of software that was written specifically for installers. I'm doing it on site. Um, and then also we've got the backup battery. Look, this is a UL listed panel. And so, uh, I say UL listed, it's, it's a um, UL qualified panel, right? Okay. So, so um, the backup battery get, means that we have to have at least 24 hours. This actually gets us a little bit more than that. And then you've got the siren. It's important to note that you can, um, in software, you can turn the siren off. So um, well, some people say, well, why in the world would I want to turn the siren off? Well, what you might do is you might, your, your situation might be like mine. My Helix is upstairs in my game room behind the entertainment center. Okay. And that's not a great place for the, for the siren to go off. And if, some, if I've got an intruder, um, I don't want them to run upstairs and find the Helix and, and, and yank it out the wall and pull all the things and pull the battery out, right? They might do that. They might destroy the panel. Absolutely. Um, so what I can do is I can turn this siren off, but then have a remote siren. And that's actually, one of the, to me, one of the great features. I can have um, remote sirens in a couple of rooms. I can put one you know, in, in, in the attic like, you, like, like you've uh, done in the past. Um, and then obviously going, kind of continuing around, you've got the device enrollment button um, and the Ethernet port. Remember, we're, we're, we're IT first, so that Ethernet sure. port is really our gateway to the, to the Internet and to the uh, security cloud. Fantastic. Great architecture there. Uh, now, I find this very exciting. Let's talk about the uh, Secure Smart Configuration Portal. Yeah, so I'm not get, really getting to announce this, but this is, I, I guarantee this is the first time that some people will have seen this. Absolutely. So, so it's pretty ex exciting, too. So um, what we did was um, at the same time that we, we released the software for um, the new version of the SecureSmart apps um, here at the beginning of the month, um, we also released this. It's the SecureSmart configuration portal. Right. So I'm sure if, you, if you're one of, one of our longtime dealers, you're familiar with, a, with Alarm Dealer. Um, this is in Alarm Dealer, but it's a little bit hidden. So and I'll tell you how to get there. This so, is a complete uh, departure from what most of our registered dealers are used to seeing, correct? Yeah, this is pretty different, right? It's, it is a completely different thing. Uh, the nice thing here is um, it's built into the alarm dealer that they're already used to. So 
they've already generally gotten used to navigating through Alarm Dealer and know how to find a device. Mm -hmm. And today, if they, if they um, go to a device and they get to a configuration screen, there's just a few, few options, a few things that they could do. Um, that's kind of born out of the configuration, out of the um, communicator world. Okay. So, but what they'll find today is if they click on the link for the MAC address and then they get to that device configuration page, at the very top, there's a brand new button that says Helix Configuration. And they click that button, it brings them to this world. Opens up this screen. It opens up this screen. Um, and this screen um, is, is one of many screens, right? So this, this is um, a complete configuration portal for the Helix. Okay. So when the Helix is online, this portal can talk to it. Um, it the, there was a, a bunch of thought that went into this. There was a, a, an incredible amount of time in terms of kind of thinking through what all the use cases would be, um, and it's, it's incredibly easy to use. So this is like your dashboard. This shows you everything. This is your dashboard. So traditionally, um, alarm dealers are used to, to, to this approach, right? It's the, uh, oh, I need to make a change. I need to change the configuration on a panel. So um, I connect to the communicator remotely. I do a download, I load that into some piece of software, I manipulate it in that software, I dump out a file, and then I go do an upload back to that panel, right? Okay. That's the process that, that dealers are used to today. That's not this. Okay. This is live. When I go to this page, I'm live. I'm talking to the panel directly, um, and any change that I make here happens immediately on the panel. Uh, not like 15 seconds later or 30 seconds later, it happens immediately on the panel. That's pretty cool. Uh, so, so one of the nice things here is we, we – um, as we thought through this, we said, you know, there's, there we have, because, you know, we run a knock here and we talk to the dealers, um, we know what, the, what those calls are that are always coming in. And inevitably, you know, you've got a customer that calls in and the first thing they say is, can you make this thing shut up, right? Uh, because they've, you know, they've, they've screwed something up. They've, they've punched in their PIN code wrong or something. Um, and so in the top right-hand corner, we've got, an, we've got an actions section. Okay. Right? So we can immediately go in and silence trouble beeps and things like that. Um, so, and that's a, sh it's a short list of actions, but um, incredibly powerful. There's, there's four or five things there you can do um, to, to make immediately take steps to, to remedy a situation for a customer. Okay. Um, and then in the center there, what you've got is kind of this, this high-level panel at a glance, right? I can immediately look at this and know is the panel online, what's the MAC address for it, so some of the baseline information about sure. it. Sure. Um, and then right below that? Right below that, um, those three little boxes that are, that are there that are kind of a, a purplish color, that's actually telling me what's populated in the slots in the helix. In so the cards. Yeah, what the cards are in there. So this particular helix that we're looking at um, has a CDMA communicator in it, has a one of the one of the Wi-Fi cards in it, so it means it's talking to a HeliTouch, and it has a Z-Wave card in it. So I can see all three of those cards, and I can see which versions they are and which firmware they have on them. That's important sometimes, right? Um, we we try we keep those updated for you, uh, but you have the capability to go and turn some of that functionality off and share that, that load of, of when those things get upgraded. Mm -hmm. um, and so uh, because we've given you that power, we also want to give you the information. Right? So below that is a full panel status. Now, you can only see kind of the top five or six here, but this page goes on and on. There's the, if you, if you scroll, were to scroll up, that panel status section would fill the entire page. Um, there's a couple of dozen different uh, panel statuses there, and, and you can see that this particular panel, the Ethernet uh, port was unplugged, right? There's, no, no, there's nothing plugged into it, but that's kind of okay because the CDMA is taken over here, right? Okay. Um, so you got all the panel status. Um, and on the far left, you can see that I've got a whole bunch of options right there, right? I, I, can, I can do things to the sirens. I can turn the, the volume up and down on the sirens. Um, I can register key fobs. I can, on the key fobs, I can set which buttons do what. Um, and I can register new zones, and then I, literally I can register a zone here and then send it to the customer and have them install it if, if, they, if, if need be. Um, one of the things, one of the great use cases for this portal um, is kind of prefabrication, right? It means that I can do an entire build of an entire system in the office, label all the zones and send it out with the installer. They now have a 15-minute install and 15 minutes explaining the system to the customer and showing them the secure smart software, Yeah, and they're good to go. Oh, that's fantastic. Uh, absolutely fantastic de delivery experience, um, and it really is incredibly fast. I, I've, I've demoed this a, a, a few times, and every time every, the, that I demo it, people just go, it's that fast? I'm like, yep, it's that fast. It, you know, it's one of those things that you um, enroll five zones and hit the hit the refresh button and then name them all, and you're done in two minutes. And it, it just it blows people's minds. Can't so, beat that. <laughs> so a, another great use case for this is users, right? I, the, 
there's um, one of the things that happens all the time is, hey, I need to add users to my panel. All right, I, I want to add PIN codes or change a PIN code. Or I'll, you know, I've got the main situation, all of that. Mm -hmm. Customer calls in, you can click right there on users. Um, it gives you the drop-down box, and I can set a whole bunch of things about that user. I can literally say what their level of permissions are for, for my system. Let's go to the next slide, and, and, and I want to show you kind of the level of detail you can get into. Yeah, fantastic. Let's do it. What are we looking at here, Scott? So this is one zone, right? So I clicked on um, the front door. I clicked on the, the zones uh, button, and that get, brought me to a, a tab that showed all the zones. And then I clicked on front door and said I wanted to edit the front door. Mm -hmm. uh, so. Um, what I have on the, on the far left is the, is the pane that's at the top, and that kind of shows me all the basic information, what, it, what, what it's named and all that. If I wanted to change that, if I wanted to change the name, I click there, change the name from front door to back door, it's done. As soon as I hit the Save button, it's saved out to, out, out to the panel. It's actually saved first to um, our cloud and then saved down to the panel, so that means that you've got all that, all that the same data updated in both places. That's okay. pretty important, too. Um, and then there's... Other things that are here for, for just for informational purposes, but then I've got uh, all the, the zone active arming levels. I can I can turn on and off um, different arming levels. Okay. Um, and then on the far right, I've got all the zone options. Right. There's a ton of options here. I can set all, obviously all the delays, um, all, all the things like um, you know automated automated bypassing whether that's allowed or not. Um, you know low battery alarming. Right. So all kinds of things. I can set all those features right from this panel. So if I were to look at the HelloLink app, the, the app I mentioned earlier that yes. installers use, yeah. same features. I can do basically the same things here that I can do from that HelloLink app when I'm on site. Explain to me one thing, Scott. Is sure. What is the situation where I would not want to be on the highest level of alert? So, well, here's an interesting example. Um, and you're still on the highest level of alert, but um, think about it this way. So um, I've, got, I've got grandparents, right? Um, the grandparents come to the house. They might want to... Set um, the their their um, the entry delay to something longer because it takes them longer to, to, to get to a keypad. Okay. Um, but to answer your question about about being on the highest level of alert, right? So um, I might have a situation where let's say this were installed rather than a home, say it was installed in an office. Okay. And I had an office in say a warehouse level, right? I might say when I I might take all of the all of the zones that are in the warehouse and I would turn and I would in this active arming levels I would turn them off for stay. And then I could use stay as kind of a daytime mode. Mm -hmm. um, and then all the ones in the warehouse would be off during that, but, but the office itself would still be secured. Right? Okay. So, so it would be things like that. It gives you lots of customizing, customization. Remember earlier we were talking about um, be, it being a custom solution and it yes. being a feature-proof solution? Yes. This is part of that customization. Incredibly powerful. This is just one zone. So one of the additional things that we're doing in the next version of this software mm -hmm. is we're going to build in capabilities to create profiles so that I don't have to recreate this every single time. Mm -hmm. um, and we, we've built this with um, kind of industry standard default. So Fantastic. You just go and set somebody up. They're going to get kind of a set of defaults. If you want to get custom, you can. Um, or if you want to set up profiles that you kind of your company has as a profile, you'll be able to do that in the future. We don't have that today, but that is something that we have on the roadmap. Coming down the road. Fantastic. So really excited about the portal. I don't know if you can tell. <laughs> and um, and, and the, the, the power that it gives our, our um dealers. That's great. Uh, let's talk a little bit more about Helix security. Sure. So, you know, the, the, the Helix was, was built from, from the ground up. Um, obviously, it's a security product. Um, so, we took every pain um, to sort through all of the possible ways that the system could be attacked. And that all starts kind of with the root, with the kernel, the, the smallest component of the operating system. And we designed that from scratch, right? So um, it was designed specifically for the Helix. It's not like Linux or Android. It's not something that, um, you know, uh, patching and uh, all those types of things that you kind of think you have to worry about. Okay. You don't need antivirus or anything like that for this thing. Um, but it, the thing to remember here is that all of the services, everything that runs on it, um, the only way to, to modify it is from us. Right? We're the only ones that can touch it. Okay. Um, and it's encrypted. So um, you know, a lot of people say, oh, that's, that, that's bad because that's, that's a closed system. But what we've done is we've designed an API stack in our, in our cloud so that if we need to integrate with other partners, we absolutely can. Okay. And we've got other methodologies to do that. But the, but the key takeaways here was this was designed from the ground up to be hyper secure. E even between the cards, you know, we, we saw the architecture where we've got sure. the, the different cards. 
between cards, the data is encrypted as it moves from one card to the other to the, to the next card. If that if that is the pathway it needs to take, wow. so on device it's encrypted. So if you think about the the system as a whole, um, it's got no built-in user face user interface. So there's no way to to attack it from a from a touch screen perspective, right? Even when we, where we've got touch screens, they're separated physically from the panel, right? It's not it's all one a built-in one built-in thing, um, and um, you know, the, the idea is that you're going to your interface is going to be your cellular device or some, your some iPad, device. your iPad, your right. tablet. So uh, that gives us a leg up right right from the from the start. Okay. But um, the, the the key takeaway here is that literally from the sensor to the panel, from the panel to all of the cards within within the card within the panel, um, and from those cards or the Ethernet port all the way up to the cloud, um, all the data is encrypted every segment across the way, um, and and at rest in the cloud. So that's that's really the, the important takeaway here. Okay, and now on this next slide, uh, you dig a little bit deeper with security. Yeah. So some people, you know, want, want to dig in, and this is this is a deep dive. So let's let's talk about how that works, right? Okay. And really, this is all done um, using um, you know, really standard asymmetric cryptography, right? It's, it's we took standards that were that were developed for Department of Defense and those types of things, and we adapted them to to this to these use cases. Right? Okay. So, um, you know, you've got your you've got a set of keys, and those keys are shared and exchanged between the panel and the cloud, and between the the um, uh, cryptics devices and the panel, um, and that keeps all of this this secure. Um, and that security is there for a whole bunch of reasons. It's not just there because um, you know we want to have a secure panel. It's also um, it protects you know takeover of those cryptics devices, right? You can't yank that panel and throw another one in, and just it, it all works. You've got you've got a, a takeover protection there as well. Okay. Fantastic. Uh, let's talk a little bit about the Secure Smart apps. Yeah, so the, this is kind of near and dear to my heart. I work on these apps every day and okay. spend a lot of time with the developers. So, um, so these are my babies. But um, the the main thing for me that that is important about the apps is that we always we are we are always moving the apps forward. All right. Um, we just released. You would never know it, but we just released um, a, a new version for, for Android, mm -hmm. um, and you actually have uh, two choices. In the settings, you've got a choice to, to kind of take a step back and use the old version, or you can change the setting and you've got a completely new version of, of, of the Android app that kind of um, swipes left and right, and you've got uh, different you know, panes and panels that you can use. Um, we're always pushing these apps forward, and um, it's something that um, it, anybody who, who calls in and says, hey, I'm having a problem with that, I'm going to say, make sure you're on the newest version because we're iterating very, very quickly on the apps. And, and as always, and it's, it's a core tenet of, of how we do business, um, dealer first, right? So Absolutely. So you're always going to find the dealer logo um, in the apps, even though we like to talk about Secure Smart, and that, and that's something, but Secure Smart is generic, and it's generic on purpose. Um, so that um, the dealer logo can be first, and, and it can be about the it's the dealer app fully customizable. Fully customizable. That's fantastic. Um, and we and we intend to advance these. And I, I expect that um, end of the year, early in Q1, you'll see huge advance advancements in the apps. Um, uh, but that's with lots of incremental steps along the way. Okay, available at the Apple App Store or Google Play. Yep. Okay, Scott, let's talk about how easy it is for our dealers out there in the audience to get started today with Helix? Yeah, so first of all, I've already talked about how easy it is to set up, right? You get yeah. the configuration pages, you've got the HeliLink app, you, it, it's so super easy to set up. Um, you know, obviously, I, to, to do that, I've got to get one in hand. Um, all of these distributors on the list, you, you can walk in the door and pick them up. Um, I was at I Triad the other day doing a, doing a training and talking to the, uh, to the Gulf Coast Alarm folks, and um, they, they had a stack over there on the shelves. And you, you pick it up. Um, then kind of the next thing to do is, is you go to, uh, ipdatatel.com slash helix, um, there's instructions there, right? We, yeah. we, want you, we want to get you off on the right foot. So the first thing to do is get this device registered into Alarm Dealer. Um, it's important to do that first so that when you bring the device online, when it comes online, first thing it does, remember in, in the security section I was talking about, um, it, it makes the communication out. Yeah. Um, so the first thing it does is phone home. And when it does that, it's important that, that it already be registered with the alarm dealer so that it gets picked up and, and attached to the appropriate network and attached to your customer. Okay, there you go, folks. First, become a registered dealer with IPDatatel.com. You can do that at our website. Uh, also, find Helix at any of these fine distributors. Go to IPDatatel.com forward slash Helix and uh, be sure to register your Helix on alarmdealer.com. Uh, Scott, now I know a lot of the folks out in our audience are already with IP Data Tell, but let's talk a little bit about 
uh, doing business with IP Datatel? Sure. So we, we've talked at the, as, we, as we've gone through this about some, kind of some of our core tenets, right? It's, it, we, we like to talk about um, you know being you know future proof, but being, part of being future proof is about having really reliable service. Um, and so IP Datatel is reliable alarm communications. Absolutely. Um, it, we also one of the things we like to talk about is, is universal panel compatibility. Helix is it, it, not only the, on the communicator side where we've got a huge you know, array of panels that, that we're compatible with, uh, but also on the Helix side, right? You've got um, translator modules. We can take over a whole, a whole bunch of sensors. We're compatible with a, an amazing array of, of devices in the marketplace. Um, we've talked about how simple it can be to, to install a Helix, and I think that the same applies for our communicator line. Um, the, the interactive services, the, the software, uh, we're one of the few people in the marketplace that can that can deliver the entire experience, right? Everything from uh, the the uh, hardware, mm -hmm. the sensors, all the way through the interactivity components, through the cloud, um, and all the way through to the, the actual software, the user interface. Um, that that makes us unique in in the, in the space, and and we focused on. Um, Helping the dealers, helping the dealers right. run their business, rather than you know, look how awesome our app is, right? Yeah. We think our app is awesome, but that's not the focus. Um, so, and and then smart devices, and we we focus on because we're focused on your on your on your business, um, we're always trying to eliminate truck rolls and keep your keep your costs down. Fantastic, uh, folks. To learn more, uh, you can always visit ipdatatel.com forward slash helix. On that website, you will find product information for Helix. I've got a product sheet there. I have our catalog, also technical documents such as the Helix Manual, as well as the Quick Start Guide, uh, and the IP Datatel AlarmDealer.com Portal Guide. Also, be sure to visit my YouTube channel, uh, IP Datatel LLC. I have plenty of Helix videos that you will find interesting. If you need to contact our sales department, you can reach them via email at sales at IPDatatel.com. Here locally in the Houston metro area, use this number, 713-452-2700, extension 1. Outside of Houston metro, I've got a toll-free line, 866-896-2944, extension 1. Scott, I am looking down the board, and we have some questions coming in. So what do you say we tackle those right now? Yeah, let's do it. Okay, first on the board is Ronald in Southern California. He asks, Scott, in your opinion, is there any vulnerability within the Helix system? Yes, yeah, so the reality is you know, this, this is a piece of hardware running a piece of software, and, and um, all technologies are, are going to be susceptible to some level of tax. Um, so, so here's what we did. Our, our approach was to say, Hey, look, we're going we're gonna to dig down. We're gonna, going to evaluate every possible link in the kill chain and harden that using um, encryption and technologies that are available today. Um, that's really kind of the best answer that I can give. You know, uh, 15 years from now, could someone figure out how to, how to come up with some you know, quantum computer hack of this thing? Possibly. Uh, but the reality is it's an incredibly hardened piece of hardware. Okay. Ronald, hope that helps you out. Next on the board, Tommy in Florida. How easy is it to navigate the Helix configuration pages? Couldn't help but notice that these look vastly different than the regular alarmdealer.com pages. Yes, they do. So one of the things that you know, we honed in on uh, is, is to make the configuration pages as simple and easy to navigate as possible. You know, in fact, if, if, if you look on, on the screens um, that we showed earlier, yeah. um, up in the corner next to every single one of the, of the settings or on the configuration page, there's a little question mark. If you hover over that, there's tooltips there. Literally every setting in the entire configuration page catalog uh, has that tooltip. So it, there's not any place in, in, in the entire system that you're going to uh, be in a situation where you're going to touch a switch and turn something from off to on and that you won't know what it is, right? So, um, and that's, that's exactly what the description says. It says, turning this off is going to yield this result. Turning it on is going to yield that result. Um, so, super straightforward, super easy to use. First of all, just incredibly intuitive in the first place. Right. But also, we add those tooltips everywhere. Okay, Tommy, hope that helps you out. Next is Curtis in the Dallas-Fort Worth area. He asks, uh, Scott, you mentioned LTE. My company already dealt with the 2G sunset last year. Now I'm hearing about CDMA eventually sunsetting. 
So what will LTE do for me and my business? That's a great question. So, you know, LTE was an obvious evolution for us. You know, one of our uh, key business mantras, as we talked about earlier, is, is, is future-proofing your business. And, you know, we couldn't see doing that with you know, kind of last-generation technology. So we, we're always pushing, and, and you know, the, uh, the uh, uh, we've effectively discontinued CDMA for, for the Helix and are, and are pushing the, the, the LTE going forward. Um, and, you know, we expect that, you know, all the carriers to uh, be utilizing LTE in their networks for, you know, years to come. So LTE is the, the future. That's where we are. Okay. Curtis, hope that helps you. Next, I have George in Long Island, New York. Uh, he says, I understand that you will have a new outdoor PIR soon. Can you talk more about the differences between an outdoor PIR and the indoor? Why couldn't I just use the regular PIR and mount it outside? Look at that. George is doing our product in mouth and forth now. That's awesome. Um, thank you, George. Good question. Um, I don't think everybody knows about that yet. Uh, so, yes, we do have um, – that's actually part of our partnership with, with, with Optex. Okay. Um, uh, that's a great sensor. I'm really – actually really excited about it. Uh, so the, the most obvious answer about not being able to use an, an, an indoor uh, PR outdoors is, is, you know, water intrusion, right? So if you could get in the rain, you might get some water in there. Okay. But, uh, you know, one of the, the additional great features of this product is that it actually has two IR sensors for some kind of some advanced animal immunity. So, um, you know, it's not just dogs and cats, it's squirrels and crows and uh, raccoons, uh, raccoons, possums. Yeah, exactly. Um, so, so that in addition to that, um, you know, this thing has an industry leading, you know, eight to ten year battery life. It's got a 190 degree field of view, uh, like a five meter range. It's a great piece of hardware. Um, it, we're really excited to offer the portfolio. Okay. Uh, so thank you, George, for announcing that for us. Oh, fantastic. We'll be looking out for that. Uh, next up on the board, Samantha in Louisiana has a great question. Uh, she says, I was at your Helix Overview webinar, and I really like the idea of having my techs out in the field doing multiple Helix system installs in one day due to the quick setup times. Question, am I able to do the Helix configuration while I'm here in the office, or must this be performed by my techs out on site? Yeah, so you, you might have been able to tell from those configuration page slides that, you know, obviously configuration can be done um, while you're on site, right? Sure. You, any web-connected device, if I've got a laptop, a, a tablet, even, even your phone, um, I could be using the configuration pages. Mm -hmm. So that means that um, you could do, yes, you could do that in advance. Um, you could have the... the uh, tech set up the system, and then you could you could dial into or log into it um, uh, from the from the web and do configuration while he's talking to the customer. You could do it after the fact. You, you, that's the whole key here. Remember, it's about being flexible yeah. and about and about helping you drive your business. Um, the configuration pages are doing exactly that. Okay, so she can do that beforehand. She can do it after. The tech can do it on site. Absolutely, absolutely. Fantastic. Uh, okay, Scott, I am looking down the board, and we have more questions coming in. Uh, let's get right to those. All right. We have a lot of great questions, and also joining us for the remainder of the presentation is Dave Main. He is Vice President of Products, and as most of you out there in our audience know, uh, Resolution Products has merged with IP Datatel. We are now one company. Dave, I'd like to welcome you into the broadcast. How are you? I'm great. Thanks, Vince. Awesome. Uh, guys, I'll tell you what, let's get right into these. We've got some great questions coming in. Let's take the first one from Joel. He asks, how do we get to the Helix panel settings and the live view from our current alarm dealer portal? So that's a great question. It's one that we, we, as we've rolled this out, we've gotten this question a couple times. It's really super simple. All you need to do is um, find the customer, um, click on the MAC address of the, of the Helix, and that will take you to the, uh, the panel, the, the primary configuration page, the one that you're used to seeing in Alarm Dealer. It has kind of the, the low-level things that you can, you can see about the basic connectivity. At the top of that page is a button that says Helix Configuration. If you click on that button, it takes you right into this new portal. Joel, hope that helps you out. Next up is Tom. Tom asks, will the configuration panel roll up to show a dealer's full book of business, i.e., all households? So that is a great question, Tom. Something that we've, um, we've actually thought about um, at length and uh, something we do intend to bring in future generations. Uh, today, the answer is no. Um, and I think you can you probably tell that from my, my answer to the previous question because when you click on the Helix configuration button, it takes you into the configuration for that panel. 
But we absolutely do intend to send, extend that functionality and the fact that we can uh, see what's going on with these panels all the time um, to be able to, to generate that, that you know, kind of full business view. Remember, we're, we're focused on um, helping the dealer deliver their business, and that would be a great way to do it. So that is coming. Tom, hope that helps you out. Uh, Dave, I have a great question for you from Corey. He asks, from a Wi-Fi perspective, what happens if you want to use both backhaul and to communicate to the other keypad? Dave, what do you say? Well, uh, yeah, great question. And um, you know, as Scott pointed out throughout the presentation, we have multiple expansion slots. Uh, if you are not using a cellular backup card and wanted to use Wi-Fi to connect up to the home or business network, you could put uh, the, the Wi-Fi card to do that in slot one. In slot two, you could put the card for the seven-inch touchscreen. Um, uh, ultimately, uh, you know, we are looking to have both functions for uh, access point mode uh, and uh, you know, infrastructure mode on a single card. We'll probably be rolling that out uh, sometime later in 2018. Today it would take two cards. But uh, one of the points I'd just like to make on that, um, you know, we really uh, try to, to optimize our products and our services to minimize truck rolls. You saw Scott put a lot of features into remote access, remote configuration. And, you know, what we hear back from dealers is joining a home Wi-Fi network ultimately ends up in truck rolls. That's why we have an Ethernet port on it. We really focus on Ethernet for that and dedicated Wi-Fi for our devices. It's battery backed up. It will, it will continue to operate if there's any power loss. And we can control the provisioning of all of our devices. And so we really try to aim towards, you know, Ethernet with dual path being cellular and then use our Wi-Fi for peripheral devices uh, only. That's kind of our recommended approach. Okay, Corey, hope that one helps you out. Uh, Dave, I got another one for you from Greg. Greg asks, does the slot 3 translator support life safety devices like smoke and fire? Uh, another great question, and, and you know, people familiar with all of our translators, we've been making these for years to take over various systems. We have, we have selected to not support life safety devices, and there's a couple reasons. Uh, with people on the call, uh, you know, being in the professional industry, we know there's a limited life on smoke detectors. We don't know how long that those have been uh, out there or installed, and, you know, we really recommend putting a new smoke detector in rather than taking something over that might have been there for, you know, seven, eight, nine, 12 years and, and beyond the life of that smoke. So, uh, so we do not support life safety devices on the translators. Okay, Greg, hope that helps you out. Uh, next up, I have a follow-up from Corey. Corey asks, will the LTE functionality allow for voice communication as well? Yeah, so the short answer is not today. Um, we are working on a two-way voice solution. It will absolutely most likely be over LTE. Um, so uh, that's the short answer. It's not today, but that is absolutely something we have coming down the pipeline. Okay, Corey. Uh, I have another follow-up on Wi-Fi. <coughs> This from Jay. Jay asks, if the Wi-Fi linked devices drop the Wi-Fi, can they switch to RF or do they simply stop communicating? Uh, Dave, what do you say about that? Uh, well, as I kind of uh, alluded to before, you know, our Wi-Fi connected devices are going over our own internal Wi-Fi. It's a fully supervised encrypted link. It's battery backed up. Uh, and we will maintain connectivity. That is a form of RF, and we'll maintain that RF connectivity uh, throughout. If the connectivity is ever lost, the, the keypad would note it. The panel gets a, it would initiate a trouble condition and, and report that up. But again, it's our own controlled network and supervised just like any other uh, uh, RF channel on, on the system. Fantastic. Uh, Jay, hope that helps you out. A question coming in from Chris. Chris asks, will the panel be able to do any 433 megahertz uh, contacts, for example, DSC vanishing? Uh, Dave, what do you say about that? Yeah, we, we, uh, as was pointed out, we can add a translator card to Helix that allows it to uh, listen to any format, 433 or 319.5 from Interlogix or uh, 345 for 2 gig or or Honeywell. So if you add one of those cards, we can enroll the DSC sensors or, uh, uh, again, any of the other frequencies, but you do require that translator card. Okay, Chris, hope that helps you out. Next up on the board, I have a question from Jay. Jay asks, 
can one save the configuration of the panel in case something goes wrong and can be uploaded again? Yeah, so uh, I think, I think um, the best way to answer this is, um, you know, Jay, keep in mind, this is not like other panels you're, you're used to, right? This is not a situation where we download the configuration, um, manipulate it, and then upload it again. So while in that situation with, with some other panels or with one of our communicator devices, you would absolutely want to make a, a backup. Um, that's not the case here. When you are making these changes, you're connected to the panel and you're doing that through our cloud. So there's, there's kind of no need or no, no capability for, for making a backup there. Okay, Jay, hope that helps you out. Uh, guys, next up on the board, I have a question from Greg. Greg asks, is the Secure Smart Portal available for units on ClareNet? Dave, what do you have to say to Greg's question? Yeah, so uh, ClareNet, for those not familiar, we, we have a partnership with Claire Controls, which does uh, really higher-end higher automation with audio systems like Sonos and, and uh, uh, you know, maybe uh, equipment in, in your entertainment center. Uh, and we have a partnership with them, and, and that device, their Click Mini, will uh, join and, and connect and talk to the, the Helix uh, panel. All the signals are routed through uh, IP Datatel's network for alarm traffic, uh, but they control all of the uh, arming, disarming, and, and configuration of the system through their connection. So unfortunately, at this point, uh, the configuration pages for Helix won't work through that system, um, but we are in, in close partnership with them, and, and we'll make sure to work with Claire uh, to, to ensure we can uh, uh, enable that at some point in the future. Fantastic. Greg, hope that helps you out. Uh, next up on the board, uh, Ray asks, can you use existing hardwire zones? Uh, Scott, what do you say? Yeah, so um, we, we've been talking about translators. So we also have a, a hardwire translator. So, um, and this is a separate device. It's not a card that goes in the, in the Helix, but um, through our partnership and our, you know, obviously our, our um, extended relationship with, with resolution products, we have their translators now as a part of our portfolio. So you can use one of their hardwire translators um, wire the zones into that, and then it will turn them essentially into wireless zones that then get communicated across the cryptics channel to, to the Helix. So absolutely, you can take over hardwired zones. Fantastic. And, and, uh, and if I could just add, add to that, that, uh, that yeah. translator in, it comes with its own power supply and backup battery and, and UL compliance as well. So uh, uh, it is a fully uh, self-contained unit and, and uh, can be easily installed. Fantastic. Yeah, so I do, I do have one caveat there, and that is um, the, the things that, that um, we mentioned earlier about um, the, the uh, fires and smokes. That w with the translators, again, we're, we're not supporting fires and smokes there, so you're not going to hard hardwire those in. You're going to uh, wire in the other zones. Okay. Ray, hope that helps you out. Uh, I have a few more that I think we have time to get to. Uh, Steve asks, what is the encryption level? Uh, Dave, what do you say about the encryption? Well, as, as Scott pointed out, we have encryption throughout the entire system and, and all of it's optimized based on its, uh, uh, you know, where it sits. So uh, the, the connection from the panel up to the cloud is triple DES encryption, just like you would do for banking or any other uh, uh, major, uh, uh, you know, online types of transactions. Uh, inside the Helix with a lot of the sensors and other devices, uh, we have some proprietary 128-bit encryption that goes between sensors and other devices. But uh, every channel, including uh, inner board communications on Helix, are all encrypted. Okay. Uh, thanks for the question, Steve. Next up on the board is Jay. Can a user log into the system remotely, or does it only go through the Secure Smart app? Yeah, so um, the, the, today, you know, I, and I think this question probably stems from, from uh, someone who's, a, who's an alarm dealer user, right? Because in alarm dealer, um, you've got the capability, kind of, you've got a remote keypad capability there. Um, we do not have that capability for the Helix. However, as he points out, um, you can do all of that through the Secure Smart app, and that's the preferred method. Okay. Uh, Jay, hope that helps you out. I've got time for a couple more. Let's go to Mark. Mark asks, what is the maximum amount of wireless sensors that the Helix can support. Dave, what do you say? Uh, well, Helix is a, a 96 zone, 50-user uh, uh, panel. So uh, 96 sensors can be supported, and, and that includes uh, any sensor, whether it's through the translator or direct on the Cryptix receiver uh, or the hardware zones that we talked about with the translator. So 96 total. Okay, 96. Hope that helps you out, Mark. Uh, I have a question coming in from Ray. 
Ray asks, how many zones can I use? Yes, that, that's the same, the same answer that, uh, that Dave just gave. So 96 zones is, is, is what's supported. Okay, 96. Uh, guys, uh, that is just about going to wrap it up. Uh, I am going to give out some information on how folks can get in touch with IP Datatel for more information on the Helix system. You can visit www.ipdatatel.com uh, forward slash Helix. There you will find product information, product sheet, our catalog, technical documents like the manual, our quick start guide, as well as links to our YouTube channel where you will find many helpful uh, Helix videos. Contact our sales department at sales at ipdatatel.com. That's sales at ipdatatel.com. Here locally in the Houston metro area, please use 713-452-2700, extension 1. Outside of Houston metro, use our toll-free line at 866-896-2944. Again, extension 1. Dave, would you like to add any final thoughts before we close it out today? No, I, I just uh, I appreciate everybody's interest, and, and uh, I'd, I'd just like to say uh, our company, our combined company here, really focuses on, on trying to address dealer needs. Um, uh, take this product. I think you're going to love it. You're going to find it's going to help your business, and keep the feedback coming because that's how we really improve our offerings and help you uh, grow your business. Fantastic. Dave, Scott, final thoughts? Um, yeah, so look, we – this is a deep dive. We've, we've spent a lot of time. Uh, sincerely appreciate everybody taking the amount of time we've taken today. I know this is a longer, longer webinar. Also appreciate all the questions, right? So we answered, what, another 25, 26 questions at the, at the, at the end of this thing. If you guys have additional questions, um, feel free to email us. Um, I, I'm more than happy to take those on and, and, and get you the answers that you need. Um, we, I'm looking at the list. We still have other questions we can, we can answer, but we are running out of time. So thank you so much for the participation. It actually uh, really makes these webinars. Fantastic. Uh, Dave, thank you so much. Scott, thank you for being here. Thank you to all of our dealer partners that joined us today. What a great presentation. Again, sales at ipdatatel.com, 713-452-2700, 866-896-2944. Thanks again to everybody, and we will talk to you in November.